If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking to learn something about Midjourney that you didn't know before. I have 14 prompt tips that will help you out. Like did you know that you can click up on the keyboard to fill in your last prompt? This is perfect for when you want to test different parameters after trying the simple foundational prompt. This works even better on the website where you can go up and down through all of your prompts. And if this isn't working for you on Discord, because sometimes the chat like times out, you can use Ctrl Z or Command Z, the undo button, and backtrack through your prompts that way. <laughs> and look how cool these are. I like number two here. Ooh, I like number four. <laughs> you know what? I like the color in number three here. Tip number two. If you're trying to make a panorama image, focus on the aspect ratio and remember, the wider the better. You could try dash dash AR 3x1 for this panorama of a mini golf course. Or maybe you want to try 4x1 for this panorama of a packed soccer stadium. Or in my opinion you might want to try 5x1 for this panorama photo shoot of a discotheque nightclub. Mid journey is capable of a lot, panoramas are definitely possible, just remember the wider the better. Tip number three. Speaking of aspect ratios, you can save any image you've ever made by using custom zoom and adjusting the ratio there. What I'm saying is that if you weren't happy with the aspect ratio you chose, you can always click on custom zoom underneath an upscale to change the aspect ratio there. There is one key thing you need to remember though. You need to change the zoom from 2 to 1. Let's take this image of our squirrel having a picnic. Because we don't want to zoom the frame out, we need to make sure that zoom changes from a 2 to a 1, so that the focus of the image can stay on our squirrel even if we change the shape of the frame. And we can end up with something like this. Our squirrel and the picnic stay the focus of the composition, but we're adjusting the frame and letting Midjourney fill in the blank space. Tip number 4. Custom zoom works a little differently on the website, let me show you the difference. If you click on an upscale, you'll see all of your options. Next to the zoom of 1.5 and 2, we have change AR. That's basically your custom zoom. But here, the interface is slightly different. First of all, the biggest thing is that we can choose where our original image is going to sit in the next generation. We can have it in the center, but we could also start it at the top or at the end, in this case on the bottom. But that's not all. This slider down here lets us adjust the shape of the frame. So why don't we try a few different things? When I hit submit, Midjourney will fill in everything up here. But then maybe we want to start the squirrel on the top and we can see everything below it. But then let's make our frame wider and we can move our picture over to the right side so that our squirrel sits center in the new frame. And maybe we would end up with something like these. Here's our vertical frame with the squirrel starting at the bottom. Here's the vertical frame with the squirrel at the top and we can see a lovely picnic going on beneath it. And here's what happened when we placed our first image on the right side so that the subject sat in the center of the frame. And Midjourney went on to fill in the left side. Just remember that you can change the aspect ratio on any image you want no matter the interface you're using. Custom zoom or change the AR on the website. Tip number five. Here's what you can do if you're having trouble generating a full body shot. If your images are always getting cut off and you cannot see the full body, try mentioning something at the top of their head, their hair, maybe the color, maybe a hat, and something at the bottom, like their shoes. Here we have the prompt, a full body shot of Optimus Prime at the beach, and as you can see, it did not work out. We don't see the full body of Optimus. However, we could try something like this. Full body shot of Optimus Prime at the beach. Optimus Prime is wearing green sandals. That's all we had to do in order to see the full body of our robot overlord. And the same idea right here for this prompt, a full body wide angle shot of a minimalist steampunk pirate, the pirate is wearing a golden hat and golden boots. Mention something at the top and mention something at the bottom. That's how you get a full body shot. And if you're new here, my name is Nolan and I'm doing my best to make learning all of this as easy as possible. If you've learned something new so far, could you please consider hitting the like button on this video so we could share it with more people? I definitely need your help with that. Now to tip number six. This is extremely fun to do and it will create the most unique images possible. It involves using Midjourney's newest feature, Style Random, and the custom zoom option. First of all, I like to start with a more realistic look, like a realistic portrait of a robotic android femme fatale. Again, I like to start with realistic, but you could go in the complete opposite direction, maybe something cartoony, anime, surrealist, or abstract. But what we are going to do is click on custom zoom underneath an upscale. And now there are two things we have to do. The first is triggering Midjourney's newest feature, 
dash dash s ref random that stands for style reference random and what that's going to do is it's going to create a completely random art style for our new generation but we're not done there. I think you should lower the zoom value. I like to change it to something like 1.4. I don't want to zoom out 2x because I think that's a little too much. With 1.4, we have a chance to zoom out more often without completely reducing our original subject. And when we hit submit, we are going to see something like these. That sort of green painterly look which Midjourney added around our frame. And you can see at the top, it was that sref random number. When you use sref random, Midjourney is going to roll a random number for you. Honestly, you could type in a random number yourself, but there are over 4 billion options, so I like to let Midjourney choose for me. And then what you're going to do is pick one that you like. I went with number one, and we're going to do the same process over again. This time we're going to delete the number and include the word random instead. I'm going to change the zoom again from 2 to 1.4, but you could choose any number in between. It really is just a personal preference thing. We're going to hit submit. And now we're going to end up with these, this sort of pink colored shiny look. There is no rhyme or reason to what art style you're going to see. I think you should just pick one you like and we're going to go through this process again. I thought this looked pretty cool. We'll hit custom zoom, delete the number, put random, change the zoom from 2 to 1.4. We'll hit submit, and then we'll end up with something like these, and I'm not sure what you would call that. Maybe a rough sketch, intricate floral design? Something like that. I'll go through this process one more time. I chose number one, custom zoom, change the number to random, and then change the zoom from 2 to 1.4. And then we get something like these, which is, I don't know, maybe Asian inspired on the outside. I think this process is a lot of fun and it really can create the most unique images possible. You'll never get anything like this just through prompting. And I recently added a 30 minute lesson all about style reference random to my mid journey beginner course. There is so much more you can do with this, and maybe you'll be interested in learning about it there. You can check it out in the description below. On to tip number seven. I think you should consider generating in older algorithms and then remixing it into the latest. First, let me show you this prompt in version six. It's a Stardust Champion of the Infinite Degrees. Pretty cool prompt, but maybe the results are, I don't know, not that exciting. But let me show you what this looks like in version 3. We get a much more painterly abstract vibe. I personally love version 3 and I think this is a great starting point. We're going to choose one we like and upscale it. I went with number 2 here. And then one key thing we need to do is go into our settings and make sure remix mode is turned on. We want this button to be green right here. Now back at our version 3 upscale, if we hit make variations, we can simply change the version 3 to a version 6, the newest algorithm. And when we hit submit, we could end up with something like these. Now look how cool those are. A sort of anthropomorphic being is coming through the generation. I'm a really big fan of these, and as you saw from the original version 6, there is really no way to get this look just by prompting alone. You sort of have to go through this time machine workflow. I just wanted to let you know that this kind of thing is possible and maybe you'll find the perfect scenario to use it. Tip number eight, don't forget about Niji Journey. In fact, Niji 5 Style Cute is still one of the best things that you can do in Mid Journey. You could take this prompt here, Crocodile Sticker Art, and all you need to do is include dash dash Niji space five, then dash dash style space cute at the end of your prompt. We are triggering the Niji bot, the anime style algorithm, and then we are asking specifically for the cute style of that bot. I hope that makes sense. Maybe you want to see the Joker, and I love all of these actually, I think those are so cool. Here's what Spider-Man might look like. There's the Hulk. I think Wonder Woman looks awesome. And then here's Harley Quinn. What do you think? Or even look at this. This is sort of an old school way of getting consistent characters. Do you see how Niji Style Cute can create like the perfect character sheet? This could be a lot of fun. Tip number nine, check out this cool prompt. You can use WF2009 in your prompt to create a very intricate small figurine look. And a special thanks to Circuit Naismith over on Discord, they're the ones who shared this prompt with me. And look how simple it can be. All you need to do is include WF2009, say at the beginning of your prompt, and then any subject you want. Here we have Batman vs the Joker. And do you see how it has that really mechanical toy figurine look? Extremely high detailed, 
extremely fun to use. Maybe you want to see an android giraffe toy? You can't go wrong with this. And then here, I tried to create a pink and black Gundam mecha, but I spelt it wrong, so here's a punk and black Gundam mecha, and I love those results. That turned out to be one of my favorite spelling mistakes ever. Number one is so cool, I highly recommend trying punk and black in your prompt. And then for the record, here's what pink and black might look like. That's what I was going for originally. Tip number 10. I know the inability to zoom in on a mid-journey picture can be frustrating, but we can kind of fake that effect. What I want you to do is start with an extremely zoomed in picture, then zoom out, and all we're going to do is reverse the images and that will make it look like we're zooming in. Let me show you how it works. We're going to start with a prompt like this, a macro shot of a sparkling diamond on top of a pile of jewels and treasure. Macro shot, portrait, extreme close-up, anything along those lines, we want our first generation to be really zoomed in on a particular subject. Then all we're going to do is click zoom out underneath an upscale. I recommend zooming out by 2x, but you could use 1.5 or custom zoom. Honestly, it's up to you. When we zoom out, it could look something like these, and all we're going to do is choose an upscale and run that process again. Here's what we have. We're going to hit zoom out 2x underneath the upscale, and that will bring us to an image that looks like this, and we'll just do that process again. You can do this as many times as you like. We'll do it one more time, and then we have something like this. Now, if you were to zoom in on this picture, I think most people would think that we'd be aiming for that larger diamond in the top right but that's not where we're going. The trick is literally just to reverse the set of images so it looks like we're zooming in on this pile of treasure. So we'll go from this to this into this, getting a little closer now, and there we are, we just zoomed in on our treasure. Now, I understand if you're not happy with that technique, but that is one way to create the effect of zooming in. Maybe you'll find the perfect way of harnessing this illusion. Tip number 11, I have to show you this prompt. It is absolutely amazing and I can't get enough of it. Check out Archigram. Maybe it's Archigram. I really don't know how to pronounce it correctly. If you do, let me know in the comments below. And I want to give a special thanks to Paul Lanou. They're the ones who showed me this art style. Look how cool these pictures are. Archigram of Kate Upton. These grids were absolutely blowing my mind. One word can create so many different types of looks. It blows my mind how cool this is. Again, like, the fact that one word can mean so many different things. Like, look how cool this is. Archigram portrait. Again, maybe it's Archigram. I don't really know. Like, look at that. Oh my god, that is so beautiful. And it is the most simple prompt ever. The exact same prompt, the exact same grid could hold this picture and that picture and that picture. Like, oh my god, the most goosebumps ever. Archigram, Archigram, my favorite prompt. You gotta try this one. It's absolutely a goat. It's in the Hall of Fame. No questions asked. First ballot Hall of Famer. Tip number 12. I've mentioned style reference a lot and I don't want to overwhelm you, but it actually has four different versions. At the end of your prompt, you can include dash dash SV style version and then a number between one and four. I'll go through examples of each one and then we'll talk about what you can expect from the differences. Style reference lets you point to a particular picture so that the next generation will follow the same style. Let's take this car as an example. I think this is a vintage illustration, something like that. And here we have a simple prompt, a simple subject. That's what I'm recommending. Alice in Wonderland. We're going to include dash dash S-R-E-F, style reference, and then a link to the picture we want to emulate. In this case, it is that vintage illustration. But then here, I'm pointing out that this is style version number one, and these are the results. What do you think? Let me show you what style version two might look like. Pretty different results at first glance. Let's go to style version number three. Okay, you might see a little bit of a pattern that this happens to look more like number one. And let's check out style version four. Again, you may start to notice a pattern. Style versions one and three are similar, while two and four are going to look similar. Now let me try to explain that using some more words. Style versions 1 and 3 might be more artistic, while 2 and 4 are more accurate to the original picture. In fact, 3 is a better version of 1, and 4 is a better version of 2. But honestly, your preferences are way more important. You can choose whichever one you like the most, I just wanted to let you know that there are four different options. Let me also point out that 1 and 3 might carry the original picture's colors into the new generation, while 2 and 4 try to focus just on the style. And I also need to let you know that style versions do not work with sref random, but you can use random 
and then take the picture that is created and use that as a style reference. And then you'll have access to the different versions. Again, I'm sorry if that sounds a little confusing. I'm really not trying to overwhelm you. Just wanted to let you know that you have a lot of options at your disposal. Tip number 13. This is a pretty specific prompting tip, but it might come in handy for you. When creating something like a t-shirt design, include dash dash no mockup at the end of your prompt to make sure you only receive the design and not a picture of an actual t-shirt. This also might work when you're asking for a painting. Sometimes, at least in the past, Midjourney would create a literal painting for you and it would put it in a frame but that's probably not what you want. You could include dash dash no mockup in your prompt to make sure Midjourney just focuses on the actual picture. Now, I'm not saying this advice is completely necessary. Here's a minimal hippie t-shirt design. As you can see, no t-shirt was generated. That might not always be the case, but I am saying that you could use negative prompting dash dash no and then words like mockup or shirt to keep Midjourney focused. And you can see from these generations that these are much more representative of something you would see on a t-shirt. I actually like number one a lot. I think that's so cool. And really, you should remember that negative prompting can help exclude anything that you do not want to see from your mid-journey generation. And tip number 14. Prompting for a collage in mid-journey can be amazing, but I think that you should give the bot some guidance. What I mean is that you should tell the bot different aspects that you want to appear in the collage. This can be so much fun. Like here, I asked for a collage of a dog, a pineapple, a mysterious box, and the Aurora Borealis. Ask for a collage, the general art style, but then include some specifics that you'd like to see remixed in that collage. The possibilities are honestly endless, and I think you can have so much fun with this technique. Like, look how cool this picture is. I love that. If you have some cool tips for me, leave them in the comments below, and maybe I'll include them in the next video. And if you haven't seen my previous tips video, you can check it out right here. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.